Hey, Rachel, this is John. For some reason, I'm just seeing the mute. I okay. can mute myself, but I don't see an option to the video option that's usually right next to that is not there. I'm trying to find it. Okay, thank you. Let's see. Okay, can you try it now, Chair? I had some pop up that said start my video, which I clicked it, but I don't I don't see myself yet. Do you see me? Yes, yes I see you. Yes, okay. John. Okay, great. Looking like we have to there. individually turn on people's cameras. So we're getting close, I believe. You tell me when we're ready and I'll start. Okay. The meeting. Yes. That was the first I had to leave and come back three times to get to here. Okay, thanks for sharing that, Mayor Smith. I think we're getting close. I think I'm finally in. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, finally. Boy, I wasn't able to communicate for a few minutes. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Council Member Daughtry. I think. We're getting close here. Thank you, whoever just switched me over. <laughs> Uh, Rachel, can you hear me? Yes, your audio is coming through loud and clear. Very good, thank you. And just waiting for our IT team to confirm. I think we're nearly there. Are you guys able to see each other on the screen? Yes, I, I am now. Okay. I don't happen to be able to, so I'm having a hard time confirming. Um, so I, Chair, if you're seeing folks, then I think we could um, move through roll call and, and start the meeting. Great, thank you. Um, we'll go ahead and then and call to order the December 3rd meeting of the Community Transit Board of Directors. Um, this meeting, as you know, is being held virtually in accordance with the Governor's Stay Home Order Proclamation 20-28. It is being recorded, correct, Clark? Yes. And, okay, and then if the clerk would please uh, call the roll, I would appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Council Member Kim Daughtry. I am present, thank you. Thank you. Council Member Joe Marine. Present. Thank you. Council member Tom Merrill is excused. So council member Mike Gallagher, I think he's he's uh, coming in here. So we'll circle back to him. Mayor John Nearing. Here. Thank you. Council member Nate Nearing. Here. Thank you. Labor representative Lance Norton. Okay. Oh. Lance, are you there? His phone's muted. Okay. Circle back to him. Uh, Council member Sid Roberts. Here. Thank you. 
Council member Jan Schwedy. Here. Thank you. Mayor Nicola Smith. Here. Thank you. And council member Stephanie Wright. Here. Thank you. I'll just circle back. Uh, did we have council member Mike Gallagher join? Okay. Uh, Labor representative Lance Norton. Okay. Uh, Chair, we do have a quorum. I'll also take a quick roll of alternates so we know who's on the call. Uh, council member Johnson. Mayor Matsumoto Wright. Here. Thank you. Council member Mead. And council member McNeil. Thank you, that concludes roll, Chair. Excellent, thank you for that. So then the portion of the meeting that we're at now is uh, public comment. Written comment was submitted and distributed to the board in advance for Mr. Joe Kunzler and Mr. Kunzler also signed up to speak. So we will begin. Hello? Yes. Hello? Uh, yes. Hello? Yeah, we can hear you. This we is can... Lance Norton. Can you hear Lance? Yes, yes, we can hear you. Thank you. Oh, thank you, finally. Can you hear me? Thank you. Um, can you hear Gallagher? Yes, yes, we can hear you. Yep. So uh, um, we will go ahead then and move to uh, public comment. And we'll begin with Mr. Joe Kunzler. And clerk, if you could uh, allow him to be able to speak now. Okay, everyone hear me okay? Yes. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you, Help Desk. Thank you, Juanita. Hopefully I thank everyone uh, acutely. Good to see you, CEO Eve. Um, good, I um, will be acute today, especially as we are on action minutes, which means brevity is rewarded. Let me set the tone today by quoting Air Force, US Air Force Great Colonel Nicole Fiffy Milowski. Um, no quibbling. Most Air Force fighter aircrew know what is implied by those two words. To fighter aircrew, it means stop making excuses. During training, you would inevitably make mistakes and learning would ensue during a debrief. It was there we discussed the how and why behind our errors. It was a quick reminder to the offender of which we are all offenders at some point in time, to fully own their mistakes, share them, and fix them, or return to this theme. With that, I want to take a moment and with um, the ongoing COVID-19 crisis, ask community transit, please resume rear door boarding and make mask wearing mandatory. Other transits, such as Skagit Transit and TransLink have made this so. I call upon community transit's duly elected board to please follow the tone CEO Heath has set as a player's CEO and make clear no mask, no service, no quibbling, just defeat COVID-19. Keep CEO Heath's spirit alive. Second, what do I mean by that? Well, CEO Heath won't make wiki quote or be a long-term CEO, but I feel in every conversation we had that CEO Heath always felt he was putting his transit athletes first. Sometimes we disagreed how to do this. But when you have a watchdog and a CEO who equally want to put transit athletes first and help Everett with Spain Field figure out their transit future, we just we had shared goals. I deeply appreciate that as our values have been tested. I've made bad calls. I own them. And I appreciate CEO Heath calling them out very much um, over the years. So I hope you will name the current boardroom uh, the Emmett Heath boardroom. We'll table the discussion on the new boardroom for another time. Finally, I want to put this request in the clear to CEO Heath, who I consider a friend and a mentor. I want you please in happy retirement. When you see something that's off or against our values uh, or against our goals, to please speak up. There's no shame in calling me out. There's no shame in calling any of us out who are still out here playing um, for better transit. 
and we don't need to quibble. And whoever replaces CEO, he needs to keep the focus on supporting the staff on the ground like he has so well. And with that, I conclude my remarks. And I want to thank all staff who helped enable today's uh, online meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kunzler. Um, that is the individual I'm aware of that signed up. If anyone else would like to make public comments, we ask that you now use the raise, uh, raise your hand feature under participants, uh, the participants button to indicate you would like to comment. If you have joined by phone, just press star nine. So that's star nine to raise your hand. So we'll pause a moment uh, to see if there is anybody else who wishes to speak. Clerk, are you seeing anybody indicate uh, that they wish to speak? Here, I've just scanned through the attendee list and I don't see any raise your hands. Okay, great. We will close that portion of the meeting then. And uh, well, this is monumental because we're going to go now to the Chief Executive Officer's report, the final one of an illustrious career. And so, um, Emmett, go ahead, and I'm sure you'll make it count. And so we're, we're eagerly awaiting your CEO report today. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm pleased to start when it's monumental as opposed to, mem to memorial. It, it's been a long time. Uh, lots to report today. Uh, first of all, uh, ridership has uh, dipped back down more or less following the increased incidence of uh, COVID infection in uh, in the in the county uh, not surprising and we expect it'll continue to follow the uh, infection rate in the county as as covid uh, continues to get better we'll see i'm confident we'll see ridership returning to the system um, on the financial front i'm recalling uh, quite some time back now when the rating agencies gave community transit a triple a bond rating at the time, it may have been the only one uh, issued to public transit agencies in Washington state. In any event, it's rare. And it was uh, an important milestone for our agency to have achieved that rating. I'm pleased to say uh, today, knock on wood, um, we still have that AAA rating in spite of the rating agencies having put the entire public transportation industry on a credit watch. So I'm hoping that uh, they don't show up. And if they do, I'm hoping they don't show up until after December 25th. Uh, very proud of, of our agency uh, maintaining that AAA rating. Um, currently, financially, sales tax has continued to exceed our expectations. Um, so we're, we're, uh, we're looking good on, on the uh, current revenue front. COVID, I reported at your last meeting that at the end of October and in early November, we had a spike in COVID infections. And I think over the crossover between months there, we had about 12 infections. We invited the Snohomish Health District in for a second visit to observe our practices and protocols and, and had another uh, affirmative report uh, from them. Subsequently, uh, all of the employees who tested uh, positive have recovered and returned to work, except for two who were the, the most recent uh, to be uh, tested positive. And we expect full recovery and return to work there. Um, for the rest of the workforce, those who are working remotely, uh, we've asked them to continue to work remotely if they can, and we extended the work from home uh, date from January 11 to April 5th. Many jurisdictions across the region uh, are out in, have extended their remote working uh, practices out to mid-2021, um, mid if not later. Our choice was to extend that deadline in smaller increments to give us a chance to uh, adjust more frequently to changing COVID conditions. Uh, so sometime in March, a new CEO and the executive team will be evaluating whether or not to extend that remote working deadline. I also let you all know in an email a few days ago that we had made a decision to reinstate premium pay for our employees who work on our base or out in the community. We uh, implemented, we were among uh, the very first across the nation to implement premium pay to recognize the extraordinary efforts of our employees uh, back in the April timeframe. 
Uh, we suspended that as the COVID uh, infection rate dipped down in the summer. And as it spiked back up, um, we decided that it was appropriate to recognize the extraordinary efforts of our employees by reinstating that 10% um, premium pay. And uh, that is in place now until January 9th. Uh, the executive team will continue to revisit that on a periodic basis and if necessary, um, uh, consider w w either ending or extending that premium pay program. Um, regarding the premium pay, I was thinking that um, you know, over the years, I, I've said many times, there are lots of ways that leadership in an organization can express its thanks and appreciation to its employees. But um, one of those is a, a monetary reward. We don't always reach for that one. But in this case, uh, I felt strongly that the extraordinary uh, efforts of our employees who are coming to work every day in order to support uh, other folks doing essential work in the community deserved more than just a heartfelt thank you, which they certainly have, but the 10% premium pay to acknowledge and show appreciation for their extraordinary efforts. Uh, at your last meeting, um, Labor Representative Norton asked about the status of the uh, Rethink Everett initiative. Uh, Rethink Everett is the name that's been given to Mayor Franklin's initiative to evaluate alternatives for operating Everett Transit uh, in the future. As you all know now, one of those alternatives is the possible consolidation with community transit. I want to let you know that our staff and our consultant teams are completing our next round of technical work to uh, prepare for a January 13 briefing with the Everett City Council. In that briefing, our staff will uh, inform the council of what a service plan could look like and what the benefits to the citizens of Snohomish County and the citizens of Everett might be under a service plan uh, for, uh, for a unified system. Uh, the city of Everett uh, provides a, a real-time video feed for their council meetings. If you're interested, you, uh, you could uh, tune in and watch our staff presentation to the Everett City Council on January 13th. I'm going to dwell on this next uh, comment for a minute because it's a new initiative for us, but I think an important one. Um, it's what we're calling Community Workshop Roundtables. Over the past few weeks, our agency has begun hosting virtual community roundtables with various organizations across the county. Our focus is to begin discussions and gather input from communities in our service area with whom we would like to reduce the barriers to transit usage and improve our engagement with those, uh, with those groups. With these initial meetings, we've prioritized Spanish speaking populations residents who are Black or African American, and residents with limited income. Our hope is to expand the feedback we receive on our programs and, and services to ensure that we understand where we are serving transportation needs well and where we can improve, um, provide better services uh, going forward. Uh, we'll incorporate the feedback from these workshops into our, both our short-term and our long-term planning efforts. To date, we've hosted two roundtables with organizations and institutions uh, and agencies in our county who represent these communities. We're very excited to begin these discussions and further develop a collaborative relationship with these communities and also look forward to expanding and involving these uh, special roundtable workshops in the coming year. I uh, would, uh, moving ahead to the next topic, I would uh, call out council member Joe Marine. Uh, he'll, he, he and his city in Muckleteo will be enjoying the long, long, long awaited opening of the Muckleteo uh, Multimodal Terminal, now scheduled for December 29th. Opening date seems to have snuck up. We've been working with Washington State Ferries for quite a while to make sure that we integrate our, um, our community transit bus service with the new multimodal uh, terminal. Uh, on the, on the uh, Muckleteo waterfront. So uh, we'll be extending some of our bus routes, have additional service, better service, better connections for our customers at the terminal and, and very excited to see that project finally coming to a close and opening up at the end of December. Next, uh, regarding uh, financial stewardship, um, you'll recall that 
our, our finance team has received an award from the Government Finance Officers Association uh, for something like 25 years for excellence in financial reporting. And that is for the quality of the consolidated um, annual report uh, or the, the annual report that most of your jurisdictions and ourselves included produce every year. Well, a couple of years ago, uh, our, our team decided to uh, redesign our um, budget presentation to the public to make sure that it complied with the national standards published by the GFOA. Last year, the team won their very first award for a distinguished budget presentation. And this year, we're starting a, a new trend now for the second year in a row. Um, I hope I'm, I, uh, I'm still around when they uh, win their 25th consecutive budget presentation award. But I wanted to commend them publicly for, uh, for this national recognition on two fronts, excellence in financial reporting and excellence uh, in presenting annual budgets in a, in a readable and clear format uh, to the public constituents in the district. So congratulations to our finance team. And also uh, on the, I talked about our community round, round tables. I also wanna talk just for a moment about our efforts to address diversity, equity and inclusion in our communities. We have, we have now um, equity and inclusion as one of our agency's core values. I'm pleased to report that um, we have been working towards the development of an enhanced DEI program. A uh, component of that program has been to develop and fund a, a new a senior level staff position that will be fully dedicated to helping to develop and coordinate enhanced uh, programs around diversity, equity, and inclusion. Um, we've completed that work and plan to recruit to fill that, um, that senior level position shortly. The position will report to our Director of Employee Engagement, Cesar Portillo. Cesar has previous, in previous assignments served as the Chief Diversity Officer for institutions uh, much larger in scale than ours, much more complex than ours. He has uh, decades of experience in the field, and I'm really excited to have his leadership and a new full-time position dedicated to further development of our agency's uh, DEI initiatives. Uh, lastly, um, by my count, I've done perhaps 70 of these CEO reports to the board. So. If you say so, uh, Mr. Chair, this is, this is the, the 70th monumental uh, CEO report to the board. I've also attended um, over 200 board meetings in the 15 years that I've been at Community Transit. I started working with federated boards, um, attending board meetings on a regular basis more than 35 years ago. And uh, I think I'm approaching something like 450 of these board meetings. So. Uh, it has been a long career. I've enjoyed it thoroughly. And I, I want to say that I, I am very, very pleased to deliver this last one to you on good terms and, and anticipating a very, uh, a very graceful exit and a very graceful transition to the next CEO report you'll hear. I want to thank you for being such a, a wonderful governing board. And with that, since I'll have an opportunity uh, to share some remarks later, I'll end and turn this back to Chair Nearing. So thank you very much. Thank you, appreciate it, CEO Heath. That takes us to committee reports and we'll start with Council Member Schwede on finance, performance and oversight. Okay, the finance, performance and oversight committee met on Thursday, November 19th, 2020 on Zoom. Tom Merrill, Nate Nearing, Sid Roberts and myself attended. On the consent agenda, approval of October 2020 expenditures and payroll items D through J on the consent agenda. Also on the consent agenda is resolution number 10-20, amending the 2020 budget. This resolution includes 2.4 million to purchase leased land for vehicle storage and sufficient space for training activities. Roland Behe, Director of Planning and Development, will provide a brief overview on the land acquisition. 
the budget amendment is the technical uh, can to move the funding to the appropriate fund. Sorry about that. Um, action agenda, adoption of FTA required agency safety plan. Community transit maintains many programs and plans to meet industry safety standards and practices. In July, 2018, the Federal Transit Administration, FTA, published a new rule that requires certain operators of public transportation systems to implement safety management system processes and procedures. Community transit, <clears throat> transit plan has been reviewed by the FTA. The Finance Committee recommends approval. Don Burr, Manager of Safety, Security and Compliance will provide an overview. Uh, also on the action agenda, Resolution 09-20, adopting the 2021 budget. Mary Albert presented the proposed 2021 budget, which you reviewed at your October 22nd workshop. A public hearing was held November 5th, 2020 during the board meeting. Answers to questions received from board members after October 22nd are included in your packet. The Finance Committee recommends approval of this resolution. Mary Albert, Budget Manager, will provide a brief overview of the proposed 2021 budget. <clears throat> Reports, third quarter 2020 financial report, unaudited. At the end of the third quarter, operating revenues and expenditures should be about 75% of budget. As of September 30th, operating revenue totals about 73% of the budget, approximately one, uh, 172.9 million. Operating expenses total about 66%, uh, approximately 114 million. Almost every category of expense was below budget, uh, especially fuel at about 34%. A copy is included in your packet. October 2020 sales tax report. This report reflects purchases made in August 2020. In October 2020, Community Transit collected $13,929,169 in sales tax revenue, $787,422 more than budgeted, a favorable variance. A copy is included in your packet. The October 31st, 2020 diesel fuel report, year to date through October 31st, 2020, community transit paid an average of $1.39 per gallon for diesel fuel. The 2020 budget amount is $2.25 per gallon, a positive variance of 86 cents per gallon. The next finance performance and oversight committee meeting is scheduled at two PM Thursday, December the 17th. Thank you. Thank you for that report, Councilmember Schwede. And the next one is Councilmember Wright, Strategic Alignment and Capital Development Committee. Thank you, good afternoon. Uh, the Strategic Alignment and Capital Development Committee meeting was held remotely via Zoom on Wednesday, November 18th, 2020 at 2 PM. The meeting was attended by Labor Representative Norton, Councilmember Schwede, Mayor Smith and myself. The committee was briefed on two informational items. The first, the facility master plan update and the second sound transit link construction update. The committee reviewed and forwarded one item to today's consent agenda. And this is the land acquisition for vehicle storage. This project provides space for parking and storage of van pool, bus and paratransit vehicles and also provides a training course for bus drivers. The operational bases are currently at or exceeding capacity. Existing space needs are rapidly becoming critical and approval of this project requires an amendment to the 2020 budget to secure initial funds. Roland Behe, Director of Planning and Development is here to brief the board on the land acquisition and the 2020 budget amendment appearing on today's consent agenda. Both items were presented to the Strategic Alignment and Capital Development Committee and the Finance Performance and Oversight Committee at their November meetings. And we have Roland Behe with us here, um, and he's gonna give us a short update. Thank you, Council Member Wright. Um, Roland Behe, Director of Planning and Development. 
I'm speaking to items B and C on the consent agenda, the land acquisition project and the accompanying 2020 budget amendment were reviewed and forwarded uh, by the Strategic Alignment and Capital Development Committee, as well as the Finance Performance and Oversight Committee. Projects of this nature are typically brought forward in the transit development plan or annual budget processes. In this case, emergent timing um, dictates that uh, we need to bring this forward outside of both of those uh, uh, time windows. Um, when the, the need for this uh, project became evident, we had already gone through the development process for the current TDP uh, and budget process. So that's why we're bringing them forward at this time. You have a memorandum, um, as Council Member Wright um, um, described, you have a memorandum in your meeting materials providing background on the need for land. The project is seeking uh, four or more acres of land for vehicle storage and driver training in reasonable proximity to our operating bases. The need is primarily driven by acceleration of phasing in the facility master plan to upgrade and expand our operating bases. That new phasing will disrupt parking at the Merrill Creek operating base earlier and to a greater extent than originally planned. This is um, requiring off-site ve off vehicle storage earlier than originally conceived. Also coach operator training requires a dedicated driving course to meet requirements. Uh, and this need has also been accelerated uh, with the change in phasing of the facility master plan. Finally, the, the need for expanded vanpool parking um, due primarily to the COVID pandemic. The duration of this need is uncertain, particularly with impending layoffs at Boeing and economic uncertainty um, and the extent of uh, telecommuting for former vanpool groups. To date, we've had well over 100 vans returned to the agency by, formal, by former vanpool groups uh, that are no longer operating. So this is really um, a prime contributor to the acute need for parking at this time. We've leased land in uh, the neighborhood around the operating base, but this is a temporary arrangement and the parking need is long term. The project is listed on your consent agenda uh, as item C, approval of the plan to acquire land uh, for uh, this parking purpose. And as I said, this recommendation comes from strategic alignment and capital development in their role of reviewing and recommending capital initiatives. And as was described, uh, finance performance and oversight also was briefed on the plan and, um, and provided that background as part of their forwarding of the accompanying budget amendment for your consideration as well. If approved, the team will proceed with evaluating alternatives and will bring forward uh, a final recommendation for land purchase uh, for final board approval um, at the point in time that that's appropriate. That concludes my remarks and I'll turn the floor back to council member Wright. Thank you very much. Our next meeting is December 16th at 2 p.m. So back to you, John. Thank, Thank you. you. Appreciate it. Thank you. That brings us to consent. Uh, does anybody wish to pull any of these items for further discussion? I move approval of the consent agenda. Second. We have a motion from Council Member Wright, I believe. Was it Council Member Roberts who seconded? Oh, oh, uh, Council Member Marine. Thank you. All right, any final discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Anyone abstain? Motion passes unanimously. We have two action items. The first one is the uh, uh, adoption of FTA required by the agency safety plan. And Director Beardsley will introduce this. Uh, thank you, um, Chair Nearing. Um, happy to introduce this, and I actually think it's fitting that uh, the proposed action item is today on Emmett's last day of his meeting uh, meetings with you. Uh, if he has the opportunity to sign this plan, it'll kind of cap off that his time here at Community Transit. He's been a real champion of safety first uh, for all of us. Don is going to go into the details about the plan, but I just want to make sure you know that while the document itself is new, our efforts at planning and safety first are not new. And so this captures and consolidates everything, um, but very pleased to see that we've been able to meet this FTA uh, requirement. Don, I'm gonna turn it over to you. Great, thank you, Jerry. Yes, mm -hmm. I am honored to be able to present the FTA required agency safety plan to the board. And it is kind of icing on the cake that it is one of uh, uh, Emmett's last items that he'll be able to sign because I know he's uh, been anticipating this for some time. Uh, next slide, please. 
Uh, so I'm just going to give you an overview of what uh, is required in the agency safety plan. Uh, the memo that went to the board provided a pretty high level detail of those requirements, and I'll just kind of give that overview. And then at, at the end of it, um, uh, there'll be a recommendation for the board uh, to adopt by motion uh, the plan. Next slide, please. So in July of 2018, there was a final rule published by the FTA uh, that required certain transit agencies that receive federal funds uh, as authorized under MAP 21 or moving ahead for progress in the 21st century, uh, that they comply uh, with the plan um, that would have a safety management system built into it um, and requires that these agencies uh, have an agency safety plan in place. Uh, the original deadline was July 20th of this year. Um, but uh, like many of us, this was impacted by uh, COVID-19 and the FTA agreed to extend out that deadline to the end of the year. Uh, next slide, please. So this is one of those slides that uh, can overwhelm you if you just get the first look at it and it's not meant to do that. And I didn't intend on reading all of it, but what this does, it kind of just gives you a sense of scale and scope of all of the programs and plans that we currently have at Community Transit uh, before this uh, new agency safety plan. A lot of these plans um, are, uh, have safety elements and have been adopted over the years. Next slide. So the one plan I do want to call out is uh, Community Transit uh, had an existing uh, system safety plan. Uh, this plan has um, met standards and in many elements of it has ex exceeded uh, the standards of what's required in a plan. Uh, it's been reviewed by APTA over the years and it has also been part of the FTA's triennial review. All of these plans here have elements that are now incorporated into this new FTA required plan. Uh, next slide, please. So some of the uh, changes that will be incorporated or are incorporated in this new plan is that, uh, of course, it's going to have to comply with the FTA final rule, and it does. Um, it will, uh, it's required that it uses a safety management system framework, and I'll describe that in a little bit more detail on an upcoming slide. Um, but one of the things the FTA also wanted to make sure is that there is this uh, continuous feedback loop and that you're continuously improving. Um, it's great to have a plan in place, but you want to always make sure that you have a, a mechanism uh, to continuously improve your plan. And then this plan really is going to act as a consolidated resource for all of the safety uh, documentation for the agency. So again, going back to all those other programs and plans, um, a lot of that stuff is now referenced, if not incorporated in this new plan. Next slide, please. So we're gonna highlight just some of the, the major plan components. I mentioned SMS or safety management system. Um, that's not uh, particular to uh, transit agencies. SMS is used in many other industries. Um, FAA being one of the big ones or in, in the federal uh, rail is also incorporated in using SMS and there's other industries that use it. Um, but there's four main components or pillars of an SMS system. Um, and it's starting off with that strong safety management policy. So that's that leadership commitment uh, to safety. Uh, there's also a safety risk management aspect of it. So this is the process of how we identify hazards and uh, mitigate hazards that are uh, found in the agency. And then there's an element of safety assurance. So how are you going to measure and monitor all of this? Uh, you, you can have these processes in place, but you also need to be able to measure performance and make adjustments. And then the final component is that safety promotion. Um, if you have that plan, um, you, you wanna make sure that it is communicated throughout the agency and everybody knows what the plan is. And you jumped ahead on a slide there, but that's good because this is a great slide. Um, this really kind of shows what SMS looks like in action. So at the hub, you have that safety management policy where that strong leadership commitment. And then you also have kind of the cycles, the safety risk management, where I talked about identifying hazards and assessing and mitigating hazards, and then the component of safety assurance. So that kind of works in that cyclical process, um, kind of plan, do, check, act. And then the all-encompassing safety promotion, uh, where you're communicating this for everybody and you're training employees. And these are the um, critical elements that create that safety culture. Next slide, please. 
So the, the board's role, and this is what's identified in the FTA requirements, uh, the governing board, um, in our case, the board of directors, uh, they're required to approve the agency safety plan. Um, but the board's role is also to provide adequate resources um, to support the safety management system. Uh, so for today, we're just here to talk about adopting the safety plan. Uh, there's no other additional items today um, as far as um, resource requests. But one of the things that uh, board could approve would be uh, the budgetary um, item necessary to implement something for safety, um, or it could be a resolutions or policies, but those are not on the agenda today. Next slide. So the next steps for, uh, from here, so really for me, this is, this is a starting point. Gathering all these documents and making sure that we have this uh, required uh, safety plan that we're going to be able to submit um, to the FTA is really for me just kind of the starting point. I think we have a great opportunity now that we have this in place to continue to build on these programs and plans we already have in place. And that's really my kind of be my charge going into next year is kind of mapping out what um, that process is going to look like and how we're going to um, help bolster these programs. And then, of course, we're going to continue the agency-wide engagement, making sure that all this work that's being done, that all employees at every level in the board um, are kept um, up to speed and are informed on that activity. And next slide. So that's today's action. Um, we're going to have that recommendation to the board that they adopt the motion. Um, but ahead of that, um, I'll take any questions. And that's the next slide there. And then the final slide is that that motion whenever you're ready to put that up if there's no questions. Are there any questions for Don? All right. Thank you for that presentation and your work on this. I'll open it up to the board then for any final deliberation or if anybody cares to make a motion. I'll move approval of adoption of uh, FTA required agency safety plan. Second. Thank you. Any final discussion? Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> Any abstentions? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. That brings us to resolution 9-20. This would be the adoption of the budget. And Director Beardsley, on to you again. Thank you. Um, well, this one's kind of funny. I always think adoption of the annual budget is a little bit anticlimactic. And this year in particular, um, the, the financial literacy for this board and for our agency this year in particular has really ramped up. And that's because uh, we were all facing the pandemic and the you know worries about the, the revenue uh, reductions in our service levels, et cetera. So we, as you remember, were able to do monthly presentations for you on a financial update. Uh, to work to control our costs in 2020 and then build a budget around what a, um, the slow recovery scenario. So we assumed a lower amount of revenue in 2021. We think that's appropriate given the uncertainty about the economy next year. Uh, gives us some room to maneuver if the economy does well. Um, so what we have for you today, and Mary's going to go into a little more detail, but we feel very strongly that we have a, a budget that's stable and sustainable and allows us over the next six years to deliver and rebuild that service um, that we've had to reduce and expand into the um, community. So just wanted to make sure that you had that perspective as we go into this. Mary, I'm going to turn it over to you. Thank you, Jerry. Mm -hmm. So before you is resolution 0920 approving the 2021 budget. I won't recap the process that you went through this fall as Jan did a really good job um, going through that. I would like to point out that um, in your email with the packets, Rachel sent you um, the board question and answer document that you can look at if you um, wish to. Uh, also, I just wanted to, to say a few brief words, um, since you've seen the budget at least um, a couple of times. Uh, this budget is uh, balanced and it fully funds our reserves. As Jerry stated before, it is very stable and sustainable and it allows us to deliver on our projects in the six-year TDP. 
Our total operating revenues are 173 million, 178,000. Our operating expenses are 159,000. 100 and 159 million 167,000 and we have a capital budget of 96.2 million um, and again our reserves and um, other funds are fully funded does anybody have any questions okay uh Thank the entire team, Director Beardsley, and, and the entire team for your work on the budget. I know we've been at it here for, for a couple of months, but I uh, <laughs> want to thank you again for that. It is kind of anticlimactic here at this point, but uh, after all the work over the last several months, uh, we're just at the final stage here. So I'll open it up to the board for any final deliberation or if anybody cares to make a motion on the resolution. I would move that the Board of Directors approve Resolution 9-20, uh, adopting a 2021 proposed budget. Second. Motion to second. Uh, any final discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. Another good budget in the books. You bet. Okay. Um, that concludes the action items. And that brings us to the chair's report. And we have a few things here um, in that regard. Uh, first of all, CEO recruitment update earlier this week, CEO candidate interviews took place with the entire board. The board is currently in progress of evaluating the qualifications of applicants for public employment and will hold an executive session for this purpose today. Uh, I would like to thank the leadership team, union officials and employees who attended the employee forum for providing feedback to the board. We received extensive um, debriefs on that and uh, data, and we're very appreciative of your input in helping to inform our decisions. Upcoming uh, meetings, the next regular board meeting is scheduled for January 7th at 3 p.m. and the quarterly board workshop, January 21st at 3 p.m. And I would like to now move into uh, an important part of the meeting, and that is, uh, recognition of our CEO Emmett Heath here in his final board meeting. We want to take a little bit of time here to do that. I'll go ahead and kick that off. And <clears throat> after we get through some of this uh, opening stuff and, and, and some things we have planned, we'll, we'll open it up to board members who, who might want to say something as well. Um, so I wanted to, to also, I believe some of uh, Emmett's family is uh, able to join us here for, for this portion of the meeting. So I would welcome you and Thank you for, uh, we know it's not easy in, in these jobs, uh, like the one that, that uh, Emmett has. Um, they're not uh, nine to five jobs, they're not 40 hour a week jobs. So we appreciate the sacrifice that you as a family have made to allow Emmett to serve in the capacity that he has. And uh, it has been something that's uh, really paid off for community transit and for our county as a whole. He's been a, a stellar um, and significant contributor to the success of this region and certainly the success of community transit. Well, we'd like to take this opportunity as a board, uh, Emmett, to recognize you for your 15 years of service to community transit, over nine years as director of administration and over six as CEO. And I'll start with some brief history. Emmett's career has been dedicated to public service, not just here, but elsewhere. Over the course of his 40 year career, he has served in a variety of public sector roles including leadership positions at King County Metro and at Snohomish County PUD. Today at this, his final board meeting with us, um, we celebrate his contributions to public transportation, to this agency, to our community, and to our region as a whole. We wanna celebrate his leadership and the great legacy that he leaves as he transitions to the next big chapter, retirement. In the weeks leading up to today, Emmett has received well wishes and appreciation for his contributions to public transit from employees, from community leaders, and our congressional delegation and the governor. I'll now take a moment to read excerpts from these letters and notes. Uh, Emmett, these complete letters and notes will be included in a special keepsake for you that we look forward to, to getting to you. Here are a few excerpts from US Senator Patty Murray, a handwritten note that's uh, the excerpt is Thank you for over 40 years of service to our state. 
Your commitment and determination to improve transit is so appreciated by all who work with you. Congratulations. From U.S. Senator Maria Cantwell, congratulations as you embark on a well-earned retirement. With over 40 years of service and 15 years at Community Transit, your tenure of leadership and dedication will have lasting impacts on the Puget Sound region for years to come. While your previous service with King County Metro and Snohomish County PUD have been exceptional, your work at Community Transit has helped shape a lasting legacy of transportation for the region. Isn't that the truth? U.S. Representative Susan Del Bene, congratulations, Emmett, on your retirement after 40 years of public service. Under your leadership, I have watched our region's transportation system be strengthened to better support the needs of Snohomish County families. Thank you for being an incredible partner over the years. I wish you the best and hope that you have time to enjoy family and friends. U.S. Representative Rick Larson, under your leadership, Community Transit became a leading transportation authority in Northwest Washington. You fostered important community partnerships that will benefit the region for years to come. I have appreciated your expertise and commitment to keeping Snohomish County moving. I believe we have a Seahawks jersey there in that uh, particular picture. Um, Honorable Governor Jay Inslee wrote, thank you for your distinguished career in public service. Community transit has, has emphasized customer and employee well-being under your leadership by focusing on riders' experiences, making a commitment to employees, and insisting on operational and organizational excellence. I wish you the very best in retirement. And Emmett, uh, what would a final board meeting be uh, without completing a resolution that was drafted in your honor. What I think makes it even more special, hopefully for you today, is that alongside uh, me to present this resolution, I have some very special guests. We have with us today all of the past board chairs who have served these past six years while you have been CEO. You see them listed there. Uh, Mike Todd, Stephanie Wright, Leonard Kelly, Dave Erling, myself. So we're going to now present to you resolution 11-20 by having uh, each of these individuals here who have served as board chair during your tenure and have developed special relationship with you, read a portion of that. And uh, we will start with Dave Erling. And hopefully Dave was able to make it on here and I will turn it over to you, Dave, to start the resolution reading. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Am I being heard okay? You are. It's good to see you in good. here. Well, uh, it's a privilege to be here today. And uh, we will trade off with past presidents in presentation of the resolution. A resolution of the Board of Directors of the Snohomish County Public Transportation Benefit Area Corporation doing business as community transit. Recognizing Emmett Heath, Chief Executive Officer on the occasion of his retirement, more than 15 years of service to the agency. Whereas Emmett Heath has served community transit with dedication to excellence as the Director of the Department of Attration and as the agency CEO. And Horace Emmett Heath refreshed agency vision of quote, travel made easy for all, end quote. To um, hang on just a second. And the mission to help people get from where they are to where they want to be. Collective reflections of our region's expanding transportation needs and changing customer service expectations. And whereas Emmett Heath's longtime service and commitment to the agency has yielded many innovative, valuable, and lasting accomplishments, including delivering the 2015 Proposition 1 promised to Snohomish County voters to provide more service, more places, and more often to meet current and future transportation needs, implementing the SWIFT Green Line, 
creating Snohomish County's first bus rapid transit network, the SWIFT network, by connecting with the SWIFT Blue Line, expanding the SWIFT network to serve Sound Transit's Link Light Rail, where it reaches Snohomish County in 2024, and also designing service to connect with Link Light Rail at Northgate in 2021, preparing the agency for growth by increasing operational capacity with a four-phased expansion of agency facilities, and prioritizing employee health and wellness with the opening of the on-site employee maintenance center, an innovative service used by over 80% of employees to prevent, treat, and recover from injury. I think you're on mute, Mike. Mike, are you on mute? We can't hear you. There we go. Um, by chance, Rachel, are you able to unmute Mike? Is that working now? Oh, there we go. I apologize profusely. We were so good. Creating the departments of customer experience and employee engagement to place greater emphasis and improved understanding and empathy on the customer's journey and the employee's work, workplace experience, supporting the agency's first transit asset management program and creating the infrastructure preservation reserve to assure the state of good repair for facilities and fleet establishing a vision for best in class research and analytics capability to support innovation and improvement of products and services and managing the agency's response to the multiple emergency events, events including the COVID-19 global pandemic in 2020 and ensuring the agency's strong financial position by developing 16 balanced budgets, managing the great recession and recovery creating a financially sustainable operations model by limiting year over year expenses and fully funding reserves. And whereas Emmett Heath has attended and presented at nearly 200 board meetings and an equal number of board committee meetings in his tenure. And whereas Emmett Heath has improved our communities through advocacy, service on numerous regional and national committees and forums, and has provided exceptional leadership and earned the admiration, respect of employees and colleagues for his dedication, professionalism, sense of humor, and vision. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Directors of Community Transit hereby expresses their sincere appreciation to Emmett Heath for the invaluable influence on community transit and honors him for the many measurable and meaningful contributions he has made to the benefit of the citizens of Snohomish County. I would like to uh, open the floor for any potential motion here. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The motion passes unanimously. Emma, this resolution will be signed and framed for you as a keepsake. And uh, now I would like to invite the past chairs who have joined us to share their remarks with us here. I'll start with uh, Dave Erlane. Go ahead, Dave. Oh, you're on mute. Try it again. Perfect. Hear me okay? Yes. So this is the 45 minute part that I'm supposed to speak. Is that right? At least I see a smile or two. No, I'm not. Emmett, congratulations to you. 
you've taken a very good transit agency to what I would um, think of as a great transit agency. You've grown and expanded service. You understood the need for change and refocus the company to integrate our services with the region. You and Nav have accomplished a long range plan and execute that plan with great success. And finally, you have gained the respect for community transit from the county, the region, the state, and the nation. You certainly will be missed, but you leave the agency with a vision and a legacy you should be very proud of. And you also give it a very bright future. And it is in this case, community transit. Emmett, congratulations. My heartfelt congratulations and great work. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. Mike Todd. Mike check, is it working? It is. Thank you. It's the, I got to do the stylish Emmett deal. That's the trick. So I was thinking about this and, you know, we first got to meet, I guess I first got to meet and know Emmett as one of the staff seated around the U. And then we learned to depend on him as the interim CEO. And then we watched him navigate the interview and the hiring gauntlet that the board is going through again right now. And then we finally got a chance to onboard him as our new CEO. And he came on to a board that he knew and a staff that he knew. But I don't think any of us knew exactly what a great ride he was going to take us on. Uh, we watched him be, turn out to uh, grow from a very capable and polished senior professional as member of staff to a leader, a leader for both the staff and for the entire agency. You know, I recall poking at the matters of governance and management and how the board and the CEO interacted. And it was kind of uncomfortable in some of those first meetings. And but we'll probably remember those as like, oh, come on, cut it out. But I think we all benefited from his thoughts and his actions as a result of that time. And I think we, we as an agency kind of grew to another level and, and took on new challenges and had a new sense of teamwork. And it was great. <clears throat> we all experienced his transition over time from being the newest CEO on the block to the most tenured CEO on the block. And I really enjoyed talking with him about taking on that bigger role of regional leadership, both with his peers and with, with us as an agency. And it wasn't just a matter, I remember they used to have the transit executive group and I remember staff sometimes used to attend and they execs got together, but it didn't seem like, at least from my viewpoint, it seemed like a big deal, but not a leadership kind of group. Emmett was, was instrumental in helping make that become the mobility partnership. And they added in leadership from PSRC and from WashDOT and from the ferries. And I think that group really turned into be a, a great leadership group in the region that's helped us both as become better as an agency and help transit become better for the citizens. Over the years, Emmett blossomed in a way that made me feel proud. Our agency man mantras about being aware of the customer's viewpoints and the mission of getting people from where they are to where they want to go seemed to be coming back from others as a measure of the impact that Emmett and Community Transit have had on the region over his six years as CEO. Personally, I have profited from our occasional lunch, lunchtime chats and time on the road together, weighty business issues or family things or whatever. We talked about both things for the agency and for my own city. I benefited a lot from those. I think we both did. Besides having a meal together or a, or a drink together or some time together, I think everybody had benefited from that. And I hope it continue these as he moves into retirement. Finally, I wanna thank you for the inspiration, the partnership and the friendship. Sorry to see you go, but you have earned it. Thanks, Emmett. Thank you, Mike. Leonard. Hey, Emmett, congratulations. I'm so happy to be here. You know, as I was reading this last whereas in the resolution, and these words that describe you and your dedication and professionalism, sense of humor and vision, I thought of a couple of more that should have been in there. Don't worry, I see you have family members there, so I'm going to behave. But the first one would have been quick thinking. And it reminds me of a time when we were at a 
conference convention and I was walking around on the floor and I stopped and there was this free shoe, shoe shine booth. And you were sitting in the chair getting your shoes shined. And I snapped a photo and you caught me and immediately quit back, hey, I've got a photo of you doing this. Well, for those of you who don't know me, most likely my photo was much more incriminating than Emmett getting his shoes shine. So I deleted the photo of Emmett getting his shoes. The other thing is inclusive. I appreciated so much your inclusiveness as a board member, the phone calls, uh, whether it was good news, bad news, updates on anything that might be coming out in the press. But the one that struck me the most was also at some of the conferences we went to and, and, and I was very fortunate to get to go to these because the workshops and the seminars were amazing and, and we couldn't go to all of them. And so you would have us get together at the end of the day and do a debrief on what we had heard and what spoke to us that day. And it was nice to hear from the other board members uh, what, what they got from the day. And it was good for me to share and, and it prepped us for when we had to come back and make those reports to the board. Been to a lot of conferences, a lot of conventions over the years, too many to mention, but I'd never done anything like that. And I thought it was a shame that that didn't have the leadership to put us in the direction to do that. And, and I really appreciated that. And, and I think it made our board meetings better. So we knew what we were gonna talk about when we came back, but your inclusiveness uh, to the board members was, was much appreciated. And, and I wanna thank you, congratulate you on a job well done. And I'm gonna hold you to uh, Eggs Benedict breakfast again someday like we enjoyed many times together and, and had great conversations. And thank you for all your hard work. Thank you, Leonard. I will now open it up to uh, comments from our uh, board. And I'll go ahead and just uh, go here in order. Um, why don't we start with, um, apologize here, Kim Daughtry. Uh, no pressure following that one there, Leonard. Holy cow. Uh, so, been on the board for quite a while. Started with Joyce. Got to see Emmett during that, that reign. Uh, part of the process of bringing Emmett on as a CEO. Always been very impressed. I would love um, to see us together with some food. And, and so, everything. in order to... Uh, show my true feelings, what I'm really going to say is, Emmett, thank you. That's all I got. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Daughtry. Councilmember Gallagher. Well, I haven't known Emmett very long, but um, the little that I have interacted in knowing of him from King County Metro, um, thanks for all of that you have done for all of the community and uh, as others have said, certainly earn it. And the legacy, I look forward to participating in that as well. So thanks again, Emmett. Thank you. Council Member Marine. Uh, thank you, Chair Nering. Um, Emmett, so I am so happy to be back in part of Community Transit. I'm just sorry that you are on your way out. I absolutely enjoyed working uh, closely with you uh, my previous time on the board. And I, I kind of see it in that even before you were in the CEO position, uh, many of us, and I think Mayor Naring will attest this as well, uh, really look to you. Um, and uh, it, not only for the interim, I, you know, I had an opportunity to kind of go through that search as we're going through now. And uh, I'm just so glad that you were in place um, ready to do the job. And like I said, I think you were really kind of doing it even before you were, um, it, you know, actually the CEO. So I uh, just appreciate you, wish you were staying, uh, understand um, there's a time for everything and I really hope you enjoy your retirement. It's well-deserved. Thank you, Council Member Reen. Uh, Council Member Nate Nearing. Yeah, thank you very much. Well, I've only had the chance uh, to serve on the board for one year, but I've had the privilege of knowing Emmett for a little longer than that. 
And I think others who have uh, spoken already have described Emmett's great qualities very well and certainly agree with each of those. I think what stands out the most to me uh, during the time I've known Emmett is his professionalism. Uh, you know, I've gotten to serve on all sorts of boards and committees over the last few years, and I don't think any of them hold a candle to the professionalism of community transit. And I think that's a direct result of Emmett's leadership. Uh, I've been to lots of states of the cities for mayors in North County, and Emmett or somebody from CT is at every single one. And uh, the communication style that Emmett has, and uh, like somebody had mentioned, phone calls on important topics. I uh, just think he's done a phenomenal job, and uh, so really want uh, to share my sincere appreciation for your work, Emmett, and wish you the best on your next chapter, and hope to stay in touch. Thank you. Labor Representative uh, Lance Norton. Mr. Chair, can you hear me? I can. Yep, you're good to go. Thank you. Emmett, um, as you know, this is Lance, and I was sitting here thinking, listening to all the the people give their best uh, thoughts in regards to you. And I was thinking that God willing, someday soon we'll be through this horrible pandemic that, uh, and we can return to what we used to call normal. I would someday love to see us all get together. Administration, the represented people, uh, for some food and beverages, uh, with, as I said, the fine administration staff to represent employees for a good old fashioned Don Rickles type roast. Wouldn't that be fun? Think of the laughter we could have. Until that time comes, my thoughts always um, would uh, have some fine memories of two guys that uh, went north out of Metro Transit. Uh, best wishes, Emma, to you and your family for good health and happiness for many, many years ahead. Thank you. Lance, I, I see your, your camera is not on, but I can see your face in my mind's eye, and I can see that smile on it. Um, Lance, uh, thank, you, thank you very much. I look forward to breaking bread someday. Great. Wonderful. Thank you. Council Member Roberts. Thank you, Chair. Um, Emmett, I remember having a casual conversation with you when you were the interim CEO. Um, uh, we went down to the city of Linwood. Uh, at that time, I don't believe you had met the new mayor, uh, Mayor Nicholas Smith. We were chatting, setting out in the best of you. And I remember you telling me how important to you family was. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, it's family that got you here. And it's family that got you through, you know, all your job and all the things that you've done and, and you've done so professionally. But his family will take you through retirement. And... Um, I think you get it, um, how important your, your family and those relationships are. So I wish you the best. Um, it's, it's just hard to see you retire at 42, honestly, but uh, we're gonna uh, miss you. And I really do appreciate the uh, limited time that I've had with you. And um, you're a great guy, you're a great leader, and the, there's good things ahead of you. Thanks, Emmett. Thank you. Uh, Council Member Sweaty. Okay, I certainly uh, echo everything uh, that everyone has said. You are leaving some immensely large shoes to fill. Um, one thing I will say is, <clears throat> just as a heads up, Emmett, in about two months, you're going to get very bored. And so I would encourage you to get involved uh, in the county and regional level. And if you decide at some point to run for office, give me a call. I'll be happy to donate to your campaign. Yeah, I know you're thinking that. <laughs> there we go. Thank you. Um, Mayor Smith, Nicole, Mayor Nicholas Smith. Thank you, John. So um, I've only been on the board for a year and what a crazy year. I mean, what a year for you to end your career on and for me to begin it uh, with community transit, but certainly have appreciated your laser focus through this uh, year of crises. And uh, I think community transit is in a good place. Uh, and for me, just personally that you uh, scooped me up as soon as I became mayor and um, uh, as uh, I think uh, Kim said, your inclusiveness uh, is, is horrendous and you have been one of my grounding mentors 
uh, as I became um, uh, seasoned in my uh, mayorship for Linwood and uh, really, really appreciate the time that you spent with me and the, the open, I was going to say the open arms, and that's kind of true because hugging's good, but <laughs> your open arms uh, always uh, help me uh, muddle through whatever I needed to muddle through. So I hear it's really great on the other side of our careers, this thing called retirement and um, that little cutie kid that Jay's got running around him uh, is going to be really happy to have you around. I just know it. So take care. Love you. Thank you. And Council Member Stephanie Wright. Thank you. Well, it's tough being a W and going um, last or almost last because um, everybody's already touched on your accomplishments and and how reticent we are that you're leaving us, um, especially under these circumstances where we can't wish you well and see you off in person. Um, but at the end of it, we're all your friends and we all wish you well. And I just wanna congratulate you on such a, an esteemed career and all of the accomplishments and all that you leave behind. Um, but just very happy for you because we always knew this was your plan. You know, you kind of gave us a timeline when you became our CEO and you always shared how important family was to you. And that's why you were here in this area. And that was what your goal was, was to retire and spend that time with your family. So this is what we wish for our friends. Uh, this is what we all kind of hope is waiting for us. Um, a wonderful retirement surrounded by family and friends and um, just having a, had a great career. So I'm just very happy for you, Emmett. And I wish that retirement brings you all that you've hoped for. Um, but to Jan's point, watch out. We're all gonna try to swoop you up and put you on a committee. So you've been warned and congratulations. Thank you. Um, I'll go ahead and save my remarks for the closing here and, and uh, I think it'd be appropriate to turn it over to Emmett and uh, give you the floor. And so go ahead, Emmett. Well, uh, you know, in keeping with uh, my character, I know there's a lot of business left to be done. I'll try to keep this brief, but especially for uh, Mayor Erling, but you know how hard that is for me. Um, First, just let me say how, how much I appreciate the gift of your time to do this. Uh, I know how busy you all are and what you have just done is created memories uh, for me that will last a lifetime. They'll, they'll cap a career and last a lifetime and I'll reflect on the kind words uh, for the rest of my days. Thank you very much for that. I. I too was recalling six years ago when we started this journey. Um, I, rec I recall a conversation we had uh, where the board was asking my, my opinion about what were the important aspects of, of achieving a, a successful public transit agency. I remember a conversation about where I was offering that it was how important it was to have a, a cohesive and collegial governing board, a high performing governing board that if, if that governing board then had a good relationship with the CEO and the CEO had a good relationship in the community, had a good relationship with the employees, that those strong relationships is what would lead, lead to success for all parties. Uh, it feels really good uh, today for me to look back and I, I can tell you that I believe the quality of the relationships between each of us and all of those groups, again, are going to be cherished memories from the time I spent working with you and, and with my colleagues. I wish there was time. There isn't, and I won't do it. I wish there was time to go around the gallery because in every square on this gallery, I have, um, I have memories of each of you where I learned something from you and developed an incredibly high level of a deep, deep respect for each of you as individuals, for the roles you play in your communities, for your commitment to the communities. So I want you to know what a learning opportunity it was for me to, have, to, to be able to have the affiliations with, uh, with many of you. You're, you have no idea how I admire you for what you do, who you are, and what I've learned from you over the years. I will look forward to seeing each of you from time to time in a more intimate setting where I would love to share some of those things. Stephanie made a comment about a conversation that took place six years ago. And, and I remember the conversation. 
Uh, those kind of moments are, are dear to me. And I also want to tell you that um, as I, I, I'm born and raised in this region, you know, 41 years of public service. And as I drive around the region, there's a lot of physical manifestations of some of the work that I was involved in. And I, I really take a great deal of pride in, in having been involved in a lot of those public work projects. Um, the downtown Seattle transit tunnel, there's transit centers all over the region, park and rides, transit bases, um, projects where I, I got to be a member of a team that built those facilities for the benefit of the citizens in the region. Um, up here in Snohomish County, um, I remember in the day uh, commenting how, how when I would drive by a PUD substation, how beautiful I thought the substation was <laughs> and transmission and distribution lines. Um, I was involved in a water quality project out in Lake Rosiger, and I remember talking with citizens around the lake about how appreciative they were of the, the public works efforts to keep the lake uh, clean. So as I see those things, here's the important message. I was only ever a member of a team that was involved in that. And I... Uh, it, it, I never did anything on my own. I've said many times in conversations with colleagues, that's the way we work today. Uh, people work with people, small groups with small groups, uh, big groups and, and agencies with agencies. And, and pretty soon you have this network of partners and it's the quality of their relationships between people and between the jurisdictions and agencies that gets things done. It'll be, that is, that is a singularly a great source of pride for me to have uh, been able to participate as a member of so many teams and, and jurisdictions and agencies and institutions and to have used those partnerships to, to, to build brick and mortar facilities that contributed to the quality of life in the community. That is a, a, a long-term heritage that, um, it makes 41 years of, of work really meaningful. Um, I want to wind, wind up by saying that I also am very proud that uh, this, in this transition, uh, we're, we have an agency that is financially sound, it's operationally sound, it's organizationally sound. You have a, uh, an executive leadership team in place that is very competent, very experienced, very capable of carrying on under new CEO leadership. The future is uh, the future's bright for community transit. Um, COVID is a so-called unprecedented event. Like many of you, I can't count the number of times I've been involved in an unprecedented event. And this too shall pass. I know, I know too that you have to be careful about being optimistic and feeling too bright about a future when we're in the midst of an event like COVID. Uh, we are still in the middle of it, but uh, we have an, uh, a community transit is, is in an outstanding uh, position to continue to manage uh, through this. Let me close with a shout out to the employees at community transit. We're identified as an essential service at the federal level, state level, local level and the people who work for community transit are identified as essential workers. Uh, the work they, we learned during COVID that the people who stayed in our system were people who needed the services that we provide. The people who didn't have choices, the people who needed us to get to jobs, medical appointments, other family errands. And, and that, I tell you, that really, um, that really tugs at the heartstrings to know that the services you're providing are so essential to the quality of life for so many people in our, our region. So I'm done. Um, Mayor Smith, you know, you said love you. Let me return that to the whole group. I feel a lot of love towards uh, this group and such a wonderful group of, of colleagues. So thank you all very much for giving me the opportunity to serve. I'll never forget it. It's been fantastic. Uh, Mayor, I could go on, but I won't. I'm going to turn it back to you. Well, thank you. Well, I'll just uh, close out with my remarks here in this portion of the meeting. And Emmett, thank you. Um, you know, I know I speak on behalf of the board here today and all of those who came before and saying what a privilege, privilege it has been to serve as board members while you've been CEO. 
You've been transparent. A lot of the things everybody said, respectful, inclusive, engaging, helped us to perform our governance role by providing clear and consistent communication. And you've really represented this agency with amazing distinction. Um, your connection and support for employees too has been a signature part of your leadership. We, I know as a board, really appreciate that you put employees first. I, I'll highlight that. Some of my, I've got a lot of great memories with Emmett and we could all, all, I know, go on and on about those, but some of my best ones are attending the Thanksgiving luncheons at Community Transit uh, or annual ones until COVID-19 hit. And I remember on I would often come out and meet Emmett, say, come out, Emmett would say, hey, come meet me in my office and we'll walk over together. So I would come and meet him and we would walk over what would ordinarily be about a five minute walk to the area where the lunch was laid out would turn into much, much, much longer than that. And the reason for that was because Emmett would stop and greet so many people along the way, employees coming out of the lunch or to it, and other employees would run up and greet Emmett. And those would turn into conversations about family and how they're doing and certain specific issues they maybe have been going through. And uh, and it was always so enjoyable for me as a board member to just watch those interactions. Um, and I think it highlights an important part of uh, not just Emmett's leadership style, that certainly is a great leadership quality, but it wasn't so much about that as just the way Emmett is. He truly cared about each employee there. He greatly valued and does value his relationships with all those employees. And to him, I think those are the highlights of his time as CEO. I know he's told me that the times when he can take those walks and, uh, and really um, enjoy the, the relationships that he's developed over the years. So I, I just think that says so much about Emmett. Um, I wanna add that working with Emmett has been one of the true highlights of my time as mayor. You know, it's it's really hard when you've been in these jobs to watch people move on. We have some of our former best board chairs and and now Emmett, it's hard to watch people move on because uh, you, you just treasure those relationships and all that they bring. And so Emmett, you're the consummate professional. You've poured your heart and soul into this agency. Uh, you can really tell when someone cares and nobody cares more about community transit than Emmett. So I wanna, give you my personal appreciation for your friendship, for our time working together, for your dedication to Snohomish County, to transit in general, and to community transit. Um, it's been a real pleasure. I hope we can stay in touch. And so uh, thank you very much, Emmett. Well, you're, you're just amazing. You're amazing. Memories for a lifetime. Thank you. Yes. Well, as, as, uh, as our CEO told us, we do have uh, some more work to do here today. Um, and so we, uh, the board does need to adjourn now into an exec and enter an executive session to evaluate the qualifications and applicants of the individuals who are in contention to replace uh, Emmett. Um, I don't know uh, how much time do we anticipate for this? I don't know what the staff presentation or not necessarily staff, but what the uh, uh, presentation of um, of Marissa and Dennis may be. Uh, do we have an estimate on that, Deb, on what we should ask for? We should uh, uh, plan for 30 minutes and then okay. extend. It okay. may be closer to 45, which right. takes us a little past five o'clock. Okay. We will, well, we'll go ahead and start with 30 then. So we'll start with 30. And it is possible the board may take action following the executive session. Uh, I will ask that board members and alternates um, now leave this public meeting and join the executive session uh, on Zoom 2 listed on your agenda. Uh, to the, to the, uh, to, to the exec in the executive session, when we're done, we will come back to this session uh, here on Zoom 1. Thank you very much.
Hey, Shauna, are you on the line? Hey, Jerry, um, can you hear me? I am. Yeah, just a quick question. I keep getting a notice that asks me to turn on my video, and I don't think you intend that, correct? Uh, yes, we did. Uh, we, we thought that would be nice for the closing, um, but no, oh. it's okay. Um, we didn't tell you that beforehand. Um, so you, Actually, I think someone did, and I apologize. So, okay, I just didn't want to pop out of, pop in and forgot yeah. about that. Thank you. Bye-bye. Sure. Are we going to Zoom 1 or Zoom 2? Hi, Lance. This is Rachel. You'll be joining Zoom 2 for the executive session. That's what I thought. Okay. I thought I heard John say Zoom yes, 1. Go ahead and leave this one and, and join the second, please. Thanks, Rachel. Thanks.
Good evening. The board will be extending the executive session for 10 additional minutes until 5.10 p.m. Thank you.
Good evening. The board of directors are going to be extending the executive session for 10 additional minutes until 5.20 p.m. Thank you.
Good evening. The board has extended their executive session for five additional minutes until 525 p.m. Thank you. Good evening. The board has just concluded their executive session and is in, in the progress of returning to this open public meeting. Thank you.
this is Al Hendricks. I, I'm so, I, get, I heard all the conversation during the executive session. I was just couldn't get off a of moot. So I apologize, but everything that went on, I approve. Thank you. We'll give everybody a moment to make sure we get everybody back in here. Yeah, John, I, yeah. I heard everything in executive session. I just couldn't get off moot. So oh, thank yeah. you. No problem. Thank you. And if our clerk, Rachel, if you could let me know when you see everybody on, I'll go ahead and bring us back to order. Rachel, do we have everybody? I'm just in the progress of checking. I think okay. we are, unless we have, there's Mayor Smith and we have council member Wright. Oh yes, we do. I think it's just at this time, uh, Lance Nortonton that we're missing. Okay. Um, maybe, do you mind, uh, reaching out to him like he did for the exec session just to make sure he gets the right code to get back into this one yes yes okay. i will thank you Okay, I have Lance on the phone here. I'm going to do something creative and see if I can put him on speaker here. Hold him up. Okay, Lance. Yes. Can he be here? Chair? chair, can you hear Lance? I could hear him. Okay, I may be lost to the chair. Okay. <laughs> oh, these, these. Okay, just a moment.
just want to say, I don't think we ever lost anybody when we were in a board meeting together in the same room. <laughs> yeah, I don't think we ever have either. No. Okay, the chair is just reconnecting at this time. So thanks for your patience, everyone. And Lance, I've got you on the phone, correct? Hi, Lance. Okay, we're back. We're just waiting for the chair to join. I have you, correct, Lance? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Can you hear me okay? The board can, yes, so they can. They're giving their thumbs up. So okay. it'll, it'll just I'm be sorry. a moment. Okay. Well done, Rachel. <laughs> the Zoom really tests our troubleshooting, doesn't it? <laughs> Creativity goes a long way. <laughs> All right. Thank you, everybody. I'm back on too as well now. So I think we have everybody. Um, uh, and so I'll go ahead then and open the floor if anybody cares to uh, make a motion. Uh, Chair Neri? Yes, go ahead, Council Member Marine. Seeing that, I will, I will certainly try to, uh, to make this motion. I move that uh, we authorize the, the chair to offer a compensation package to candidate B um, for CEO of Community Transit. Oh, there it is. Oh, it's pretty close. Employment contract with candidate B for the position of Chief, Chief Executive Officer of Community Transit. Thank you. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any final discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Does anybody abstain? It is unanimous. Thank you. And uh, I, will contact, I will contact candidate B this evening and let them know and the other candidates will be contacted as well. Um, and that brings us to the end of our meeting. I wanna publicly thank the board for your uh, considerable and thoughtful deliberations of this important matter and all the work that you put into this, both in meetings and outside personally. And I appreciate the comments that everybody uh, said from the heart and uh, it was, it was uh, a really good process. And I wanna thank the staff, uh, particularly Deb and Cesar for your immense contributions to this. I wanna thank CEO Heath for his uh, contributions and, and uh, appreciate the fact that he's uh, so committed to this agency and um, also want to thank uh, Dennis and Marissa Karras. I don't know if they're still on, but they've just done a fabulous job with this uh, entire process and we're not done yet, but we're, we're nearing the end. So I'm sure I've left somebody out, but uh, finally, I guess, thank you to all the employees and everybody who, who uh, participated in this. So thank you for that. And uh, I guess with that, we'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Unless, is there anything else, any other business for the good of the agency before we do that? I move we adjourn. All right. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Have a good night, everybody. Thanks again. Thank you guys. Thank you all. Okay.